So I'm usually a pretty big wuss when it comes to horror movies, so I typically avoid this genre as much as possible. Um, but I know there's a lot of great films in this genre, so I'm trying to be brave and branch out and watch some of them. So today I'm watching the Patreon voted 1973 film The Crazies. I don't know the cast, I don't know the director, I don't know anything about this. Um, trying to guess off the title, people will go crazy. Um, that's all I'm guessing, it'll be a literal title. Um, but yeah, I'm curious to watch more um, older horror movies from the 70s, and I know horror's been around a long time, but I'm trying to branch out and watch a variety of horror films. So thank you so much for sharing in this first time watching with me. If you have any other suggestions for horror movies you think I should watch, please comment below. And if you're ever curious about what gear I use or what's on the bookshelf, I've include a link in the description and if you want to have a say in what movies or tv shows i watch be sure to join patreon and as always please like comment and subscribe to this channel and check back often for more awesome content i hate those stupid cuckoo clocks destroying the house and it's gonna set it on fire. Mommy, wake up! Uh-oh. Oh, gosh. Mommy? Get out of there, kids. Save yourself. Get out of there. Yeah, what the heck's going on? Oh, I didn't realize this is a George A. Romero. Okay, nice. That's awesome. I've seen a few other of his films. They both burn pretty bad. Oh gosh. Okay, yeah, so this nurse and firefighter are gonna go uh, see the kids previously from that scene we saw at the house. You see the soldiers? Soldiers. A couple truckloads of them. Of course, smudge. Why would there be soldiers coming in? Major yeah. Ryder will explain. We haven't got time. Break out those syringes. We're gonna need a lot of them. Why, yeah, why is he wearing a gas mask? I think I can save the boy. Move, nurse! And all these people in hazmat suits? Okay, some kind of biohazard. Personnel with emergency equipment. But this isn't the sort of thing I consider right away. Look, we've quarantined the area. We're sealing off the town. The whole town's become infected? Print check for all communications. You don't talk to me or anybody else unless you get a voice print check. Voice print check? I'm not sure what that is. He said that fire himself. His wife's dead. Oh, man. Oh my gosh. Okay, yeah, so the dad's at the fire. He was like as if he had realized what he had done. He started to cry like a baby. Yeah, okay, so he doesn't remember what he did. Oh my trees! My trees! Mother, I'm gonna go! Yeah, and they said he went from like laughing maniacally to being sad and realizing what had happened. Sir, Company A's arrived with the rest of the radio gear. Where do you want it installed? Yeah, so they have some kind of, he didn't say it's the vaccine, they said it had the antibiotic. Highly contagious virus. We're expecting several cases of it by morning. I just don't want you around here. You're gonna Sounds very me. relatable to modern day. Sure. Yeah, and they're trying to sneak this nurse out to get shots to her husband or her partner. Um, and the two of them to hide out basically because she's pregnant and... They don't want anything to happen to the baby, obviously. Yeah. And if she's around all these people, chances of her getting sick or higher, obviously. Pennsylvania. I feel like um, Night of the Living Dead also took place in Pennsylvania, which is another George uh, A. Romero film. What the hell's going on, Sheriff? You know what I do, boy. Let's go. Yeah, if there's not enough for the town, that's not good, obviously. Hmm. It's got good pacing so far. I'm enjoying it. Uh, sometimes with older movies. Yeah. The wheels if you want to bust in, find out what's up. And she's gonna come see you. Oh man. Um, yeah. Sometimes with older movies, I find the pacing is pretty slow, but I'm enjoying it so far. It's definitely I'm curious to see what's gonna happen. If Trixie jumps that perimeter, this thing could spread over the entire continent. All right. Trixie is that the name of the virus? Size weapon it should carry to. Burn out the infected area. They're gonna bomb the city. I feel like that was Ned the Living Dead also. They had mentioned something like that. And again, like a virus and Ned the Living Dead as well. We're gonna have a hell of a time getting on that plane, soldier. Maybe so, sir, but we'll do it. And I don't recognize any of the actors or any of the cast members so far. True early morning. 
Oh, Party Central. Look at this hopping place. Oh my. Yeah, they're rounding up all the townspeople and getting them to the high school. That'd be terrifying. Yeah, they're not really explaining the situation, they're just barging in with guns. Was he going to go fishing later? Like, what is he doing? Yeah, and these don't seem like sets, these just seem like people's houses. Oh, we got a fighter. We got a fighter. He's giving him so many bonks. Now, if you want me to get that job done, you get me the stuff I need, and you get it the hell in here before the morning's over. Yeah, they're saying that plane crash is what's caused this virus and that the what they're using to cure it, maybe what was crashed, was intended to be a biological weapon. What we're doing here is for the come on man, let's get the hell out of here. Watch it, Bucky! Every civilian weapon Yeah, they're taking away their weapons because I'm guessing that's what happened with the fire in the beginning. That guy was affected by this virus and then set his own house on fire. So if they, if they take away people's and yeah, the very fake blood, like it's too red. Oh my god! Yeah, and shooting through a window. Also, if you've seen uh, Night of the Living Dead, that's very reminiscent. Oh god! Yeah, it's like this virus makes them act crazy. Like crazy is the name of the movie. That's what I'm going with. Oh god, she stabbed him with a knitting needle. Oh god. Good lord. And then she's like, okay, back to my knitting. Oh my god. With the string still attached. That old lady just stabbed him. Oh god. Yep. Oh my god. Yeah, and they seem normal until you, uh, until it's too late, basically. It's not like they're like foaming at the mouth or anything crazy where you could be like, okay, stay away from this person. Like, they seem normal. Oh, bonked him. Oh, right in the back of the neck, you gave him a chop. Is David infected? He's acting more aggressive. And the audio seems to be a bit all over the place, but I can I can still hear what they're saying, but it doesn't seem like a smooth mix of audio. Yeah, things are definitely uh, progressing quickly. These guys are taking over the whole town now. How the hell are you guys gonna explain away a town that's either wiped out or reduced to mindlessness? Yeah. I'm curably mad. You got that? Yeah, that's interesting. There's no cure. So basically, if you get it, you're screwed. So he said, yeah, you either die or you stay crazy for the rest of your life, whatever that may be, basically. So, yeah, that's not hopeful, obviously. So, yeah, I feel like it'll have a high body count for a movie, for sure. And this was before uh, Night of the Living Dead, so I'm curious if this kind of inspired Night of the Living Dead. Like, I know they're not saying zombies, but obviously virus and stuff was still uh, prevalent in that movie. Is that banana, bananas and whiskey? Okay. I have it, yeah, and they don't know, they just said it's very contagious, but they don't know how it spreads, like if it's in the water, but if you touch somebody, do they get it? I mean, just a little bug, right? Can't be. Frank, will you leave us alone for a minute? Yeah, and these kind of horror movies, I think it's not like a boogeyman that's making it scary, it's more like the unknown, like you don't know if somebody has it, you don't know how you can catch it, you don't know really what, like, once you have it, it's too late, basically, so... It's not like outrunning a monster or anything like that. It's trying to survive, but with very limited knowledge of how to do that, basically. See? The whole thing's insane. How can you tell who's infected and who isn't? Right, so yeah, it's impossible to tell. 15 or 20 hours. Damn it! So you're mixing healthy people with unhealthy people, basically. I need a manager. 
<laughs> yeah, they're trying to do get blood samples so that they can send them out and do testing and possibly work on a cure or you know prevent this from happening again. But uh, they don't even have like the airtight containers to send out the blood sample. They don't want to obviously contaminate more things by sending out contaminated blood. Ah! Oh God! Yeah, basically until somebody starts attacking you. Yes, flamethrowers. Yes. Oh god, man on fire! Until someone starts attacking you, you think they're fine. That's good enough for me. Yeah. You can go back to town if you want to. Yeah, and again, we're focusing the story on a small group of people who are just put together in this situation. Because he's gonna make it, he's got a brain. That helps, yeah, usually, yeah. Yeah, and like you said, like if they're quarantined, but they're hurting them all together, that means everybody will probably get affected eventually because they're in such close contact instead of isolating and being away from people, which again relates to current situation. So yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, all it takes is like one person within that group to go crazy from this virus and everybody's in trouble. Yeah, this guy's covering himself in gasoline. Oh God, and setting himself on fire again. Another person on fire. Oh God, that's so fake, but still. Oh God. Yeah, and people fighting back against the army because they don't know what's going on and, or they do know what's going on and they don't agree with how it's being processed. Oh my gosh. Oh. Was she sweeping the grass? Oh god. Yeah, they said it's like a rural area so there's a lot of farmers who would obviously have weapons. She's literally sweeping the grass. Was this actually shot on location in Pennsylvania? Comment below and let me know. Oh my god, this body count's just gotta be massive at this point. And we're not even like, we're like halfway through. <laughs> She's losing it. Oh. Upset, that's all. We're all upset. She'll be alright when we leave here, she'll be alright. No, I don't think that's how it works. Get down, man, out of sight! Yeah, they don't want people leaving, they want people staying in this town. Yeah, I feel like this is just the perfect recipe to cause panic and chaos and you're just mixing, yeah, people who you don't know that they're infected or, yeah, it's just... And like I said, like once they're infected, there's no way to treat them, you're just preventing them from hurting other people, basically. Cheese and rice. Yeah, she's lost it. Yeah, and again, in Night of the Living Dead, we saw the daughter attack her family, so I'm curious to see if this will happen in this. The ones with the virus, man. That's like they're crazy. Hey, that's the name of the movie. Oh my god, this guy! He was answering your questions, like, oh, come on. Green Beret, They were trying to find out more information and this guy just went trigger happy. Has he got the virus now? Is he going crazy? Because he was close with that girl as well. Yeah, and again, the whole movie's taking place for like a relatively short time span, like it's only been a few days. Oh, that's true too. That'd be convenient. Yeah, if this perimeter breaks, they're gonna bomb this entire town, basically, to prevent the spread and kill everybody within that perimeter, obviously. You know, they're gonna blame it on radiation, and like, that's what they're gonna tell people what happened instead of what actually happened. Oh, God, what, no, stop! Oh, God, that's his daughter. 
Yeah, exactly. He was worried about who she was hanging out with. Well, well. Oh. oh my god. Oh god. Well, the dad's gone now. Stop looking out the window. Ah, I thought you were gonna get shot. Uh. What's your name? Oh no. This is gonna end very bad. I gotta get out of this town, man. Oh, bonked him. Yeah, he seems to have moments where he's like himself, and then moments where he's like hyper aggressive, and he can tell that something's happening to him, obviously. So, yeah. Oh, that'd be so bizarre to be experiencing that and not know how to, what to do about it. I can't see a thing. I'm not moving. Move in. Stay yeah, I imagine it's hard to see through those gas masks. Oh god, oh god. Uh, yeah, you got him. Ah, uh, good. How many bullets does he have? My god. Cheese and rice. Oh, now you now you got snakes. They don't obviously camouflage very well in the green forest. Yeah, he's out of bullets finally. Oh, shoot. Yeah, I don't even know what the body count's at this point. Like, it's gotta be hundreds. How many of those hazmat people have died? Like. And again, that seems to be like, from the George A. Romero films I've seen so far, there's like that not false ending, but there's a scene where the character is okay and then four seconds later is shot and that's exactly what just happened. He took out that one hazmat guy, put his gun down, and then we just see him being shot from the other side. Okay, so they were able to find the specific contaminated blood or to possibly make a cure. Yeah, and I don't know what's with these different phone, like he has to give all these different codes and stuff to get through to talk to somebody. They have to go through like so many, he's on hold trying to talk to somebody to put this. Oh my god, and he's being shoved in there with everybody. Yeah, he's like, well, being on the phone is going to take too long, so I'll just walk over there myself, and in the process of doing it, he's being... <gasps> Oh my god, he just dropped it. Oh god. Won't that just release it again? Oh yeah, of course his hand is in it now. He's contaminated for sure. Oh dang it. Yeah, that's not good. Frick, yeah, and he didn't tell that other um, scientist what to look for, so she's not going to know what to do. They'll never find me. They'll never find us. She's got it. Yeah, those antibiotics weren't strong enough, obviously. I can't hear you. He basically left her in this cement block thing to either die because he knows she's infected or to hopefully find a cure and come back. Oh, I don't, I don't think that's <laughs> happening. So if she has it, it's very likely the baby also has it. Hey, that's the name of the movie. Yeah, if he puts on the suit and pretends to be one of them, he can escape. And he'll also obviously be more protected from the virus if he's got the mask and the suit on. He does yeah, she doesn't recognize him. But oh god, he's gonna shoot him. They're just gonna see the suit. Oh god, did they shoot her? Does he have it now? Oh man, so many questions. Uh, oh, Judy. Oh, shoot. Well, now they're doomed. I think we better go on 3,613 total population. 2,100 20, survivors. 
That's a, still a lot of people. It's like a thousand people. Oh my gosh! Starts all over again. You don't have to go through the medical before you leave the area. Yeah, in case he has it. Our boys have checked the slides and left in his microscope, but we can't make heads or tails out of it. Yeah. Oh man, that's too bad. Sooner or later. Oh, write it down. They have to get him out of there uh, in his birthday suit because in case his clothes are contaminated. Oh, they sent him down fresh clothes. Ah, uh, yeah, and now he's off to do the exact same thing in another city because they're showing symptoms and are they? Uh, I think there's possible contamination and they think stuff got out before they were able to seal off this town. And same with um, Night of the Living Dead, they uh, have the credits rolling over a scene. So that was my first time watching the 1973 film The Crazies. Um, I didn't realize it was a George A. Romero film, but that's awesome. I've really enjoyed his films that I've seen so far, so it was nice to see some of his, um, and even some of his earlier work. I've seen Night of the Living Dead, um, so this was before that. I definitely know some similarities between the two films, and I'm curious if this film was kind of like his first version of Night of the Living Dead, and then he kind of turned it into zombies, um, as opposed to The Crazies. Um, but yeah, overall I enjoyed it. I feel like it was a good horror movie um, despite it being not a typical like boogeyman horror. Um, like I said, I find that these type of horror movies, it's the unknown is what makes it scary um, and it's interesting to watch people trying to solve the problem and the roadblocks that they run into um, sometimes for comedic effect I find like when that guy's on the phone and he's trying to get through and even the guy's trying to talk to the president and he has to get um, voice like confirmation or something like that to actually be able to speak to him um, and I know obviously the president there would be many channels you'd have to go through to talk to him but what even when the scientist is trying to get through to talk to somebody about what he's just discovered um, ultimately that's what causes him to be knocked out that's what causes him to I believe they said he died um, and he's not able to deliver the news of what he discovered because He's in the process of trying to tell this guy over the phone, but then he has to be on hold for so long and to go through all these possible channels to tell the person he needs to talk through instead of just having like a direct line or an easier form of communication. Um, he decides to go tell them in person and obviously on the way to going to tell him in person, he's almost pushed into the high school gymnasium with everybody and then he manages to get away a little bit, but drops the contaminated blood and he's knocked down and his hand touches the blood which I think is pretty safe to say now means that he's contaminated so yeah oh, it was heartbreaking because you felt like they were so close to making progress and so close to maybe not necessarily finding a cure but at least making some progress in the right direction and helping people and I think they said the population of the town was 3,000 and some and that they were able to save 2,000 so assuming a thousand people if not more or less slightly um, had died in the very short span um, from this past two or three days like I'm gonna say the maximum this time period has been has been a week um, from like the night we found out about this to the very last scene um, with David being taken into this facility and they're gonna have him attested for his immunity which that would be great if he's immune and maybe they'll be able to take something from his blood and make a cure or be able to research it and study it a little bit more and figure out um, because yeah like with most situations there would be a small percentage that's either immune but also a small percentage that's like hyper susceptible to this type of stuff so yeah he just happened to be in that small percentage and Obviously that works out well for the movie that he doesn't as our main character um, He's not the one becoming Infected unfortunately Judy was not so lucky and her and the baby died She did get those antibiotics at the beginning um, But I guess it was too late or not enough um, and she was around quite a bit of people especially in those early stages So she, unfortunately she did get it and yeah, oh man I didn't know if he was gonna like leave her trapped in that like cement brick thing that he put her in or what his plan was because I feel like he knew she was infected um, and the possibility of her attacking him was 
very likely um, on the fact that like he might have to kill her if she starts doing something yeah I don't know what, how that would have played out and even when um, he's testing the blood he's like you know if we could run this through a computer program the computer would be able to run all these different combinations and figure it out quickly as opposed to the two of them doing it by hand manually looking through a microscope and they're not even wearing their masks because it's impossible to see through the microscope with these masks on um, and again this quarantine contamination virus obviously that's that's something that relates to modern day and these past few years of a virus taking over. So I felt like even though it was filmed in the 70s, it was still a very relatable film um, present day considering everything that's been going on. And I thought it was interesting how the story kind of focuses on this small group of people, um, these two friends and the partner Judy and then this father and daughter um, who are all trying to escape the town because they don't trust the military and they don't really know what's going on also. It doesn't sound like they told anybody what they were doing. They just showed up to their house and started taking people and weren't really explaining the situation and shoving them all into the high school and that was that. Um, I think they were planning on making a formal announcement but they said they were still waiting on like bullhorns and speakers and stuff to be able to actually do that. So I could see how it would be very panicked and chaos, especially someone busting into your door, into your house and taking you and they're wearing hazmat suits and they've got guns pointed at you. Like I can't even imagine how terrifying that would be. And especially to be given no information um, and obviously corralling everybody together into one location probably would backfire and yeah if by having everybody in one close area if one person is affected and decides to start hurting everybody because the virus causes you to go crazy hence the name of the movie um the crazies and starts hurting people and if you're all in a tight space it'd be very easy to hurt a lot of people in a short period of time obviously um so these people are trying to isolate and get away from the masses um and obviously the military wants them to stay because they want to keep the virus contained I mean I think you could play the other side of it as well as being like well if Judy had gotten out and she was we did find out later that she was infected then she would have infected other people so it's obviously a risk for them to leave um, and a risk for them to stay because they stay the chance of themselves getting infected are higher if they leave the chances of them spreading that infection to other people obviously is higher as well and they didn't have any proper they weren't giving the civilians masks they weren't giving them hazmat suits anything like that they didn't have even enough vaccines or these not vaccines they didn't have enough antibiotics um, for the town so they were just giving them to the military people and people that they deemed were of high importance and that was it everybody else was kind of left their own devices and hopefully you were immune but it sounds like it was obviously a very small percentage as from that little group of five of them um, basically all of them ended up dying except for David who was immune so one in five or whatever the odds might be I'm not sure if there are secrets or remakes or anything like that so comment below if you think they're worth watching and I should check them out. Some of the similarities I saw between this film and Night of the Living Dead um, I believe they were both uh, take place in Pennsylvania obviously the virus um, the small main cast that we follow and kind of a random group of strangers um, short time spent everything taking place over a few days the credits coming up over a scene um, there was lots of people shooting through windows which if you've seen Night of the Dead you know how that plays out um, and yeah just kind of like the unknown and figuring it out and they blamed it on radiation which I believe was also the cause of the virus in Night of the Living Dead and just kind of this like lack of communication and there's not really a clear plan as to what's going on for these like the civilians don't really know what's going on they're kind of left to their own devices to figure it out. Night of the Living Dead we did see them use like news media and those kind of outlets a lot more. It was more the military trying to figure it out and doing their research and and yeah, and then of course at the end we also see that the virus has in fact spread to another city. So now they're going there and going to try and contain it. And he's like, well, you've done this once before. And it's like, it feels like a backhanded comment because he's like, oh, you're so good at this. Like it also could kill you. And how they have to like send him down a new suit um, before he can even get onto the helicopter to get airlifted out of there because maybe it's on a suit. They knew how people had been contaminated in the first place with this plane containing this Trixie, this bio weapon that had crashed and gotten into the water system basically and then that water obviously was spread to the townspeople nearby um, but I don't think they ever said how it transferred from person to person they just said it was highly contagious so assuming everybody
everybody in the town drank water or came in contact with water at some point. I feel like they all would have had it, but how you transfer from person to person, like if they're saying isolate, it usually means they don't know or they're trying to figure it out. Whether it comes from human contact, somehow contact with more water, like we didn't see any of the cast members drinking water or anything throughout this movie, so it must be transferred through the air or con human contact again with something like that. Because even our small group that was away from everybody else, they did eventually all become contaminated um, with exception to David who was immune, but anybody who could get the virus got it. Um, and yeah, like I said, like they're not near anything else. They weren't near any water sources that I remember seeing. Like we saw the daughter started to show symptoms first. And again, that's something else we saw in Night of the Living Dead. The daughter of this family ends up killing her own family um, when she's a zombie. Um, but this daughter is infected and then her dad becomes infected and then David's friend becomes infected and then Judy becomes infected. So it obviously spreads between people. Um, but yeah, they don't know if it's through contact, if it's through air. Again, like I don't think they ever said how that happens. So it would be so hard to contain and so hard to, as a person, feel like how can you stop the spread of this because you don't know and like I said they're not providing you with anything any information or any tools to how to prevent this like they're not suggesting that you wear a mask even though they're wearing masks and yeah it was definitely uh, an interesting concept for a horror movie for sure and we also found out that basically if you got the virus there was two options you were going to die and or you were going to stay crazy forever basically um, but it was interesting to see how it affected different people in different ways, like their responses seem to be slightly different, although all usually aggressive. The first stage or like the first symptom that I think um, we saw with somebody having the virus was they were laughing at a situation that normally people wouldn't find funny. Um, and I think that was kind of the first clue that something was off about them. But again, like, how do you medically test for that? I don't know. Um, and then we just saw the progression and some people it seemed to happen quicker than others. I think they also mentioned like a high fever um, was one of the symptoms, but yeah, they're obviously still figuring it out as this seems like the first time this has happened and yeah, they don't really have like a guidebook or anything to follow or any kind of information to go off of. So maybe the next town they would have more success and be able to save more people now that they've learned things here. But overall, I really enjoyed it. I think it's interesting when there's not like a typical monster or boogeyman. Um, I think more it was like fear and panic and the unknown and if somebody is affected, you don't usually know. It's not like they like turn green or something. Like it would be pretty hard to tell if someone Someone sitting next to you was affected until it was too late like I said until they started being hyper aggressive um, and then we also found out that it kind of causes like a blackout temporarily like they don't realize like what happened at the beginning when we saw that dad set his own house on fire killed his wife um, and then he's in the police car and goes from uh, laughing they said goes from laughing to this like sad realization of what he's done and like this regret obviously seems like normally he wouldn't act this way but because the virus was making him act crazy Crazy. He did these things. Um, so yeah, it was interesting to not only do these things, but then have the self-awareness that that's what's happening. I don't know if that would continue as the virus spreads. You get more and more sick. Maybe you would lose that and you would just become in this permanent state of crazy. Um, but yeah, I thought that was an interesting twist instead of having it happen all at once. It was kind of like gradually becoming more insane. And we saw that with David's friend as well. He was kind of going in and out of these moments of clarity and then these moments of acting crazy. But thank you so much for sharing in this first time watching with me. If you have any other suggestions for horror movies you think I should watch, please comment below. And as always, please like, comment, and subscribe to this channel and check back often for more awesome content. I hate those stupid cuckoo clocks. He's destroying the house and is gonna set it on fire. Voice print check. Trixie, is that the name of the virus? Was he gonna go fishing later? Like, what is he doing? Oh God, she stabbed him with a knitting needle. Birthday suit because in case his clothes are contaminated. Was she sweeping the grass? Cheese and rice.